Hola amigos, Hannah from Speak Better Spanish here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about what are our subject pronouns in Spanish and why do we care? Well, if you're like a lot of us, maybe you haven't studied grammar in quite some time, even in your own language. And in that case, we might forget what some things mean, such as subject pronouns. What the heck is it? Why do we care? Well, our subject pronouns tell us who is doing the action in a sentence. So, we know that verbs are the action word. They show us what action is occurring. And the subject pronoun matches up with the word in Spanish to tell us who is doing that action. So, for example, if in Spanish we were to say, she speaks, I'm sorry, if, it, if in English we were to say, she speaks, she would be the subject pronoun and speaks would be the conjugated form of the verb. They need to match up together. We can't say, she speak. We can't say, she, I don't know, there's lots of other things that also wouldn't work. The same rule applies in Spanish. So before we even talk about verbs, we first need to get familiar with the subject pronouns. We typically review them in a very same structure, like in the same order every single time, no matter who you study with, where in the world you study, what book you're learning from, we almost always see them in the exact same layout. So it's really helpful to learn them in this way, just for that consistency as we start to practice these more in the future. So first we'll start with yo, that means I. Tu means you, informal you. When we talk about tu, we're talking about someone that we're very familiar with, someone around our same age or younger, just someone that doesn't need any additional respect. We want to address them in a casual way, and we're speaking directly to that person. Then we have el, which is he, ella, she, usted, you, formal. Now this is when we're speaking directly to that person. And when we're addressing them in a formal way, it's because we want to give them a little bit of extra respect. It could be someone that's a stranger, someone that's older than us. It could be a lawyer, doctor, mayor of the town, the president, anybody that we want to give a little bit extra respect to. Those are all of our singular pronouns. So we'll typically see the subject pronouns. We'll typically see those in a in a vertical column on the left-hand side, starting with yo, then tu, then el, ella, usted. And then on the right hand side, we're going to see our plural subject pronouns. So we're going to have nosotros, which means we. Nosotras also means we, but when it's a group of all females that we're speaking about. Vosotros, used only in Spain, but that's the informal plural. So it's like we're saying y'all when we're addressing a group. Vosotras, same thing, informal plural used only in Spain, but also this one applies just to a group of females. So when we have a bunch of females there and we're talking directly to them, vosotras. Then we have ellos, which is either a mixed group or a group of all males, and we're speaking about them. We have ellas, a group of all females, and we are speaking about them. And we have ustedes, which is y'all or a group that we're speaking directly to, but this is a formal group. So if we're in Spain, it's a formal group. If we're in Latin America, it could be formal or informal because we don't use vosotros and vosotras in Latin America. So the only way we have to refer to a group of people when we're speaking directly to them in Latin America is ustedes. That's it. So we're going to have on that right-hand side column with our plural subject pronouns, we're going to have that nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, ellos, ellas, ustedes. And we're going to keep that same structure when we start to learn verb conjugations. So as we start to work with AR, ER, and IR verbs in the present tense or any other tense that we might choose to learn, we're going to see them in that same exact layout. So it's really helpful to get familiar with that. And it's really helpful to understand the differences between some of the different uh, use cases. Like if I'm speaking directly to someone, does it matter if it's a male or female? Well, to some extent, yes, but in the case of choosing the subject pronoun, it doesn't because our only subject pronouns when we're speaking directly to one person is either to or usted. So we just have to decide if it's formal or informal. If we're talking about someone and it's one person, does it matter if it's male or female? Yes, because we have to choose between our subject pronouns el or ella. So some of these kind of things play into it. Once you start to get familiar with the subject pronouns, verb conjugations will be a lot easier to deal with. So it's just something good to, yeah, just really familiarize ourselves with and one of the kind of the building blocks as we're starting to learn Spanish grammar. 
which is very helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.